Hi, my name is Ben Pascoe from LearningSurfPhotography.com. I'm going to be talking about the SPL housing for a GoPro camera today. Uh, I've just picked it up and I've used it once in the water and I just want to do a really quick first impressions um, slash unboxing of the product to see, show you what you get. So when it arrives, you'll get the aluminium case, uh, which is there, nice SPL embossed on the back, uh, flat port on the front. And so if that's all you've ordered, that's what arrives. If you've gone for one of the optional domes, this one's a five inch dome, then obviously that's gonna be in the package as well. Um, there is a video by SPL which shows you the putting together with the standard front port. This one's actually a little bit different to the one that I saw pictured in, in the original kind of promotional images from SPL. It's got a very thin layer of uh, either, it might be acrylic or, or glass on the front, rather than having a, a block of acrylic like it had before. Um, it's also got a nice sturdy button on the front for controlling the on off switch on the front of your GoPro. So um, I'll link in the notes or in the um, underneath this video to SPL's video about how to pop this one onto the housing. But I want to talk you through this one because I haven't seen it anywhere else online. And a few people I've seen on Instagram um, have asked why you would go for this style of housing over, say, something like the original GoPro Hero 3 Plus housing on something like the Connect Trigger. And there's a couple of reasons why you would. Um, so obviously the regular housing, if you don't have a connect trigger, then it doesn't have the pistol grip style um, shutter release, which is really handy when you're shooting surf because you're obviously trying to maneuver yourself around. Uh, here's an older style Hero 3 housing, compatible with the same cameras. Trying to hold it like this. Um, I've used it in the past with a GoPro bobber, sorry, GoPro bobber. And trying to do that means you have to use it two-handed, or if you're one-handed, then there's always a chance of getting your thumb or your finger in the shot. I've done that before myself. So having a pistol grip obviously makes it react a bit more like a DSLR in a housing. Um, SPL have gone for a thumb-style pistol grip, and I'll show you in a minute how sensitive that is, but it's, it's really sensitive. Um, makes it a bit easier for selfies as well, because you can use it like a pistol, like a trigger grip there. Um, so obviously that's one advantage over the standard housing. But one thing that's unique to SPL's system at the moment is the dome port on the front. And what that will allow you to do is over under style um, or split style shots where you can see under the water and above the water at the same time. Um, it's something that I've done in the past with a DSLR in a housing with uh, a bigger dome. This is uh, an eight inch dome port from, from my Aquatech housing. So that's one tool you can use with a full-size SLR to get the, the same sort of effect. Um, SPL do a five inch and an eight inch version. As you can see, the dome is like a whole um, hemisphere, a whole half a circle, a half a sphere rather of acrylic. Um, and that gets the lens on the GoPro as far away as possible from the actual element of the dome, which is in contact with the sea. So it gives you um, a more distinct line uh, of water when you're doing these over under style shots. So similar sort of idea with this one. As you can see, it's not a half sphere. It's like the top, maybe third or so of the, maybe half of the dome. Um, to give you an idea, this dome is off a, an older Aquatech style housing, which was designed to be used with the Canon 15 mil fisheye on a full frame camera. So a 35 mil um, size frame, which is about equivalent to the, the fisheye on the um, GoPro cameras. So as you can see, doesn't use the whole dome. So this one, the element of the um, fisheye is gonna be really close to this curved surface. So it's gonna be really good for shooting above the water, um, for getting crisp action shots above the water, but it won't give you the same sort of effect as something like this with a GoPro or this with uh, a fisheye lens, which is separated a bit more from the actual element of the dome. So um, I'll pop a few examples of my shots over under style shots. Uh, there's plenty more available online. You'll be able to find some really um, much better shots than mine, I'm sure, if you look hard enough. But that's the kind of thing that you're going for. Um, naturally, you can shoot video or stills with the GoPro, but the thumb release here it really lends itself to shooting photos, which is um, probably my main focus with my DSLR rig. I always shoot video with the GoPro at the moment. It comes with me every time I go to the beach, so I have it on top of my housing. Uh, or I have it mounted on my board or about my person somewhere. So I haven't done too much shooting with stills, but this kind of rig is really gonna help out when I, when I start to experiment a bit more. Um, I'll be testing this one and the 
connect trigger and the SP Gadgets remote pole, which uses the GoPro Hero 3 Plus Black Edition Wi-Fi remote. You can buy that remote separately as well. It works with all of them. Um, that's going to be a similar sort of thumb style one. Um, I'm not holding out much hope for this in the surf, to be honest. I think it's more like more likely to be used on land or other activities where you're not. Um, it's a bit too cumbersome for swimming at the same time and things like that. So I expect um, I'll be using the SPL with the flat port um, for actual action surf shots. Um, the brief experience I've had with the dome itself and the kind of shots I like to get with my um, over under style setup with my DSLR, usually either when the waves are really small, um, so like a foot or so, um, obviously the water needs to be quite clear so you can see what's going underneath, um, and a lot of kind of more um, ocean lifestyle kind of thing. So SUP is really good because you can it's a lot more predictable than waves. Um, so if you're someone who shoots video or stills or video with a GoPro of uh, stand-up paddle boarding or kite surfing or kayaking or fishing um, would be good. Anything like that, this is really going to appeal to you. Obviously, if you live somewhere with which gets a lot of, or there's a few surf spots around you where you can go where it'll be like consistently quite small with good water clarity, then this is brilliant. Um, it'll really allow you to get shots which you wouldn't be able to get otherwise with a GoPro. Um, some people might be a little bit worried about the techniques that you need to use with it and how different it might be. Um, but I'd say once you're used to holding the GoPro like this rather than whatever other method you're using at the moment, then it's it's astonishing how easy you'll put together some really unique shots with this dome because it's it's so easy. You just um, literally point and shoot, as you'd imagine with the GoPro. It does all the, all the settings and things for you. Um, so I'll do a quick run through of how to put this on because they don't mention that in the SPL video. They only use the, the flat port there. So the first thing to note is there's no control on the front button of the GoPro. So make sure you get this in the mode you need it in before you put the dome on. I'm gonna go for 30 photos in a second, um, which is my standard mode of taking stills with it. I might wanna go for the 30 photos spread out over a bit of a longer period if the waves are a bit bigger, but to be honest, as I said earlier, like this, um, with this setup, you wanna be shooting when the waves are quite small and the water clarity is really good. So that's the mode you're gonna be in nine times out of 10, I imagine. Uh, next thing is I'm gonna pop the port cover. You get a neoprene dome port cover with it to stop it scratching. Um, when it was sent out, I got it in a nice big box, lots of bubble wrap. Um, you get full set of instructions with it, which is great. It goes through all of the um, things you need to know. Um, it doesn't go into techniques, things like that. It's literally just, a, as you'd imagine, instructions for using this housing and making sure your camera is going to stay dry inside. Um, this is the only system I've used which um, doesn't use the original GoPro um, polycarbonate housing itself so you do have to seal it completely separately in a different style of housing so for me it was fairly straightforward because I'm, I'm used to using that kind of uh, this kind of housing before I've actually had an SPL aluminium a series uh, housing for my DSLR which I really liked um, worked really well and it's it's survived a lot of um, everything I've put it through in terms of surf photography so I've no doubt this will outlast any sort of uh, plastic or polycarbonate style housing. So back of the dome, you'll notice it's matte black here and then it's like a glossy acrylic um, for the most part. Um, makes it really easy to see which way the GoPro goes on. Um, obviously there's a hole there right in the middle for the lens to go through and everything else is slightly offset. There is a little window there so you can see through um, to the settings LCD screen on the GoPro so you'll know what setting it's in. So you just match up the, the GoPro in there fits so snugly that it doesn't even fall out when you do that. So I say that, don't, don't try that at home. <laughs> Probably fall out when you try it. Okay, so it just slots on nicely. There's four screws that come, or bolts rather, that come through the aluminium housing. You get some spares of these little uh, bolts which go on the back. Now, the way that SPL suggests that you do this is you tighten them by hand, so just get them basically resting on the aluminium side so that they're not putting any pressure on it, they're just literally resting. That's about right there. Um, 
pop each one on, they suggest to do it in a kind of cross pattern. So go to from opposite corners, opposite corner. I'll start in the top right, so I'll go bottom left. This is the kind of thing you get really used to after you've done it a few times. Um, and naturally, you might well have to do this a few times because if you wanted to change now to uh, video mode, for instance, <coughs> you'd have to, <coughs> excuse me, um, you'd have to take the housing off, um, press the button on the front and then pop it all back on again. Uh, you can do it fairly rapidly when you're used to it though. Um, there's a little knack to it though, I'll show you in a second. If you got them all hand tightened, then in the same cross pattern you want to do a quarter turn. One there, top right, quarter turn, bottom left. Top right, quarter turn, bottom right, quarter turn. Let's do the same thing again with another quarter turn. Okay, on all of them. Now, obviously, especially in the instructions, it goes into detail about how you should test this before you put the camera in. Make sure everything uh, everything is A-OK -okay before the camera goes in there, just to make sure there's no issues with the seal. Uh, you can also um, kind of eyeball the, the seal um, in between the acrylic base of the dome and the aluminium housing. Um, you don't want it to be completely flush to the dome because it's going to um, pinch the o-ring too much. It doesn't need that much pressure to go on the o-ring to make a good seal. Um, that's something that will become second nature when you've done it a few times uh, and something that you'll definitely be used to if you're used to using a DSLR housing for instance. Um, the pressure that you need to apply to take the photo is, is very little so I'll show you here. That's it, that's all I need to do. That's taken 30 photos now. Um, originally I thought it might be a bit uh, a bit less secure than having a, a finger trigger on there, having the thumb, but it's not really, especially if you're using video um, or if you're shooting 30 photos over a couple of seconds, you just hit that very lightly and then you can hold it with one hand anyway uh, and grip it with your thumb as well if you need to. Um, really nice so kind of ergonomic design. This shaft here is made of like a nylon material, I think. Um, so it feels very sturdy. It bolts on, so it comes in, in two pieces with the aluminium bit and this bit. So feasibly you could attach it to something else if you wanted to. I'm not sure what kind of rig you could make up with that. Um, but obviously the default one is going to be the one that comes with it. Um, I imagine they make that a little bit longer to incorporate the, the extra length you need if you go for the 8 inch dome version. Um, this tool also comes in the package, so that's useful. You can, you can get going straight away and you don't need to go out and buy a tool yourself. Um, same bolts are used for the flat port as the dome port. Um, that gives you a really, really quick rundown on why you'd want to use a, um, uh, a port like this on your GoPro housing. Um, I believe the flat port housing and the handle um, are $200 and then the five inch dome port I think is $250. Um, you have to email SPL housings uh, if you go to splwaterhousings.com. That's their website, head to the contact us tab and you can find out all the details for yourself and shipping to your area and things like that. Um, all in all, my first use of it, I was very surprised how easy it was, how intuitive I felt uh, it was to get that over under style shot. Um, I'll be doing a lot more testing and hopefully in the next few weeks there'll be some surf um, here in the UK and I'll be able to put it to proper good use. Um, I'll try and take it out on the river as well, see if I can find some fish or something because um, I think that's really where it's going to come into its own. Um, also try testing out the flat port with it just in, in the waves um, and we'll see what happens. But that's to give you a brief rundown of what this dome port is all about. Um, you can obviously find out more at splwaterhousings.com or check out the post at learningsurfphotography.com. Um, soon enough I'll have a full review up. Um, stay tuned here. If there's any questions you have or any suggestions for the review, anything you'd like me to check or anything you want to see about this housing flat port or dome port then leave a comment here or head over to learningsurfphotography.com put a comment on the post there um, and i'll do my best to help you out uh, you can email me as well ben at learningsurfphotography.com any questions at all i'll do my best to to answer those um, especially if there's any suggestions for the review uh, and that includes the connect pistol grip and the sp gadgets remote pole as well I'm going to put them through the paces um, as soon as there's some waves, basically. Uh, and then we'll see how they compare to using the GoPro handheld, as I normally do, and using my full DSLR setup um, with the dome port and the fisheye. 
So looking forward to uh, a bunch of reviewing. Uh, thanks very much.